For a song called Beer, this is only appropriate. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 11.30 in the morning here, but I'm excited to get to Real Big Fish. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lone University. Today, we're getting to Real Big Fish. I've had a lot of requests for this band since I reacted to Streetlight Manifesto a few weeks ago. And I love when horns and great bass playing is in the same song because I am a bass player and a trumpet player. I've had an equal amount of requests for beer, trendy, and sellout. I'm pretty sure I've heard sellout, but trendy and beer were sort of the tiebreaker for me. And in the kitchen earlier this morning, I opened it and I saw one beer left. In fact, that's a Southern Draw by Great Raft Brewing, who I used to work for, best brewery in the world. And it felt fitting for this Friday video release, so if you like beer, you should grab one and join with me. But beer is from their major label debut, Turn the Radio Off, released in 1996. This song is a fan favorite and was their breakout album. Now, I'm reading on Wikipedia that the original composition featured no horn parts because the band's horn section had just quit the band, in conjunction with the fact that Barrett took heavy inspiration from the guitar-driven sounds of Sublime, who I would love to cover them on this channel too. Let me know what I should do. But I'm also reading that the song was re-recorded a few times, and the final version ended up featuring the additional instrumentation, and they re-added it back for this album release. So without further ado, let's get to it. Beer by Real Big Fish. Instant Smile. Okay. Starting A minor, F, C, G, kind of a one, six, four, five chord progression. And starting the song with that progression, with that sublime guitar tone, no pun intended, just puts you in a great mood right out of the gate. That's something I've just learned about the little amount of ska I have heard less than Jake. Streetlight Manifesto really got the bug with me with this one. And this sounds great. The walking bass lines are so good. I'm going to talk about those in a second. Let me let it play a bit longer. But I don't know how you can't hear this first 30 seconds and not just be instantly transported into a better place, a great mood. I mean, it's just something about all of those elements in a song that just resonate with me emotionally. Like, it's just such a good, pleasing sound. So, loving this already. I will too. Okay, great. Verse chorus, we got it. Matt Wong has been driving this shit from the first few beats when the rhythm section entered. Walking bass lines will forever be my favorite bass playing style, partly because it's one of the oldest bass playing styles and was sort of where the electric bass really was born. They started out with jazz. I come from a jazz background, so this is really in my DNA. But I have to say my favorite thing about walking bass lines, and I think I've said this in some other videos, it's that you are the one member of the band in the composition living a few beats in the future. You are directly pulling the listener's ear with you and letting them know where you're going to take the song. That is the power of a walking bass line. So not to use the exact chords from the song, but if I just took a simple, just two chord example, E and A, let's say I'm trying to get from E major to A major, for example. Starting here, you can really go about it so many different ways. And with walking bass lines in a traditional 4-4 framework, time signature wise, I have four beats to get there. Really just three because my first note must establish the chord where I'm at. And I'll make an analogy that I've always thought about with walking bass lines. I think of walking bass lines like a GPS in your car getting from point A to point B. Point A is establishing the chord. It's where we're starting. So if my first chord is E, and my point B, wherever I'm going, is A. So, not to be confusing, but point B being the note A. 
the notes in between it are my journey there. And you could take the scenic route. You could take the shortcut. You could take the fastest way, but you're going to get there no matter what. It just depends on what kind of journey you want to have. So here's a couple examples. I could go from E to A like this, or I could go back down and go, or I could go, that one's not as cool, but it still works. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Some bring your ear more than others, or I could go, and the cool thing about it is, is once you leave your driveway, if I'm leaving and backing out of my house, I've already left point A on that E, and I'm only focused on getting to A. But the thing is, everyone else in the band is still on that E for the duration of that bar. So I always think about walking bass lines as like driving somewhere and taking the scenic route. And you can hear that on display here as Matt Wong weaves together those chords. There's a million different ways to get around them. But when I look at a jazz chart now or something with chords and it's a walking bass line style, I zoom out, I kind of mentally link together the chords, and I think, what kind of journey am I going to take this song on? Because it is ultimately up to me. Love it. Let's get back to it. So A, F, C, G. But I guess you changed her mind. Well, I should have known it wouldn't be alright. But I can't live without her. So I won't be awesome. If I get so well, I'm fast out of the floor now, baby. You are my love. Okay, the chorus here, it's the same chords used. Instead of the A minor, they leave that out, and they're just going F to C to G. And the cool thing about it is, is in the key of C major, which this song is in, because A minor is the relative minor of C major, but A minor is a sad-sounding chord. And we're talking about happy, good vibes here. So when you take out that A minor and you go into the chorus with the only three major chords in a key which is the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Those are all major chords. So they're essentially picking the three happiest sounding chords in the key that they're in by just taking that A minor out because it has more of a serious sound. And then it gets to the F. But I love the upbeat feel of that chorus, just landing on those major chords, keeping it upbeat, which is the whole vibe and nature of this song. You can perfectly hear that here. Back to the A minor. Woo. Really getting to that last fourth bar. Bass going from his territory down here, going up for a bass fill. Classic thing you could do, especially coming out of a solo section. You know, when they, a guitar solo happens traditionally in a piece, it's almost as an excuse for the bass player to let loose a little bit. Maybe not over the solo, but maybe around the solo. But certainly at the end of the solo, and you can hear as that guitar solo wraps up, he starts walking up higher. You can hear that bass fill, he kind of rips up higher on the neck. <laughs> Keeping it walking. Great way to drive into a new section and match the intensity of that guitar solo. Hear how it just starts wailing here. Great use of dynamics. Everybody kind of joining together, bringing it up and then they just drop right out here for this next section. So let's get into that and hear what's going on here. Woo I can hear the tone a little better now. Maybe someday I'll think of what you say. Maybe oh, yeah. next time I'll remember what you do. She looks like heaven. Maybe this is hell. Place. 
that went into kind of a straight reggae thing here. So I'm kind of primed with that description here from the Wikipedia that said Barrett. Um, I don't know what member of the band that is. I'm assuming the guitar player, singer, wanted to take it in more of a sublime style. And I have heard some sublime. I'm not, I've not lived under a rock that large, but I would love to cover them on the channel. It's been a while, but I, I know enough about the reggae influence to kind of hear they injected that into a dynamic breakdown to really contrast that driving stuff that happened in the front part of the song. Streetlight Manifesto did this a lot too. I think they were a little more intense. Like that's more like almost like progressive ska, but this is just kind of mashing up all the greatest vibes with great musicianship in a really, really accessible package. That's kind of what I'm gathering so far. Speaking on Matt Wong's tone, hard to tell. It kind of has that stingray sound to me, uh, which I kind of have the stingray pickup selector on here you kind of get that nasally kind of just really girthy uh i don't know bass playing tone words can just come and go but So kind of a similar tone, just has that pickup, that Music Man kind of pickup sound. It could really be anything. I don't think it's a P bass. It sounds more like a jazz bass if it's going to be something Fender. But let's go back here. I want to kind of hear coming out of that last section. Taking it down to more of a two-step feel. Maybe someday I'll think of what you say. Ooh, tasty. Next time I'll remember what you do. She looks like heaven. Cheers. Maybe this is hell. She said she'd do it all Those little breaks are so clever. Just kind of pauses all the intensity and lets you just kind of breathe for a minute or take a sip of beer. <laughs> so happy. I love this. Ooh. Good catchy melody there. That those are effective melodies. And I think the last time I heard a song with some like non word vocal things melodies it was in uh, no effects is the decline still one of my favorite videos i've done so far um but he did the na 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 na's at the end and i i kind of made the point i remember in that video that it's a great way to <clears throat> remove a listener from any sort of subject matter and just pull them into the music but not just go on for a long drawn out instrumental break where the vocals are just not there so it's a great way to still kind of keep a listener's attention with a vocal melody but just pull you into just the way the music feels and kind of remove any subject matter or imagery with the lyrics. And I know this song is just about, I guess, just drinking beer, aptly named, but it even goes past that and brings you back in with the great catchy melody, almost like a playground chant simplicity. Three notes. And the cool thing about the notes they choose is that those notes all work over the chord changes under it. So, for instance, if I, you know, if I play a D and it's over A minor, that would be the fourth in A minor. But then they change to G, and that same D mm. they're on becomes the fifth in G major. So that's a great lesson in creating simple melodies. You know, find a note or two that all of the chords in your progression share, and by hanging on one note while the chords change underneath it it could become different scale degrees of that chord and it will kind of recontextualize the notes you use. And that's just the, the forever lifelong art of writing a great melody. And it can be so simple. And that's proven right here with just three notes and the whoa, whoa, whoa's, you know, that's something that really grabs you in. Let's ride this out. <laughs>
guitar layering is so good. I'm not sure where you live, but where I live right now, it is 66 degrees outside Fahrenheit. For my international viewers, um, it's sunny. It's perfect. No humidity. It's Friday. It's about noon, but it might be five o'clock where you are. And it was just the perfect day to do this song and have a beer and listen to a song called Beer by a really talented band who I would love to learn more about and check them out. Again, Ska has become my latest guilty pleasure. I've not listen to much of it because I kind of save that stuff for the channel. But at some point, the floodgates are going to go open and I'm going to binge ska music for a long time and then I have nothing else to make a video on. So I'm trying to find that balance. But this is such a great song to kick off my Friday, my weekend, and what a great band. What a great bass player. Matt Wong really doing the walking bass lines. Again, I use the terms gluing together a lot, but this is a classic textbook example of what it means for a bass player to glue a song together. The horns weren't quite as prominent as, let's say, Streetlight Manifesto, or even Less Than Jake. I did a cover of a song here if you want to check out me playing some Less Than Jake. A lot of fun. But the horns were more of a layered thing, and that might be because they were added after the fact. I can certainly see that they would not be as prominent in the mix or the production. But just having the layering there is very awesome to me because the horns provide this same like vocal characteristic, but they're not a vocalist, but it contrasts with the teeth on the bass tones in the guitar. And you just have this, it just makes the songs three-dimensional. I don't know, ska sounds so big to me when I listen to it. There's so much going on, but it's the way all of the elements come together to make this big, just 3D image of great musicianship. And particularly the song just put me in a great mood. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. I always appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. If you want to come find me on Patreon to support the channel further, you can do so here. I've got tons of content up. And wherever you are, may you have a great weekend. I'm going to finish this. I hope you guys have one as well. Cheers. Love you all. All the stuff I normally say. We'll see you next time.